Good evening. It's a uh, Wednesday afternoon, actually. Um, this isn't like a scheduled show. I just decided I had to put this out there today. Um, it's kind of a big day for Maryland fans here, and um, kind of wanted to say a couple things about Gary Williams. Um, well, I guess let me just—I uh, don't have anything scripted here, so I might go off on a couple of tangents, but. Um, We've been seeing a lot lately about Joe Paterno and legacy and where things stand with him and where his place in history should be, how things ended and all that, and the impact he left. Gary Williams left an impact on this town, for sure. He is the most important person in the history of Maryland athletics. And he's going to have the court named after him this evening at Comcast Center, and rightfully so. This guy took over a program that was destroyed by the death of Len Bias, Maryland's own scandal, um, Many people thought it was pretty much the death of the Maryland athletic program. If you went to a basketball game at Cole Fieldhouse in 1990, there was probably, you could probably count the people that were there. I remember, I remember in fifth grade, I went to a Maryland basketball game with the safety patrols. And we got to go, and they played Coppin State, I think it was, or Morgan State, or one of the state schools, and there was nobody there. Nobody there. And I, I don't know why I remember this, because it, it was, like, so inconsequential at the time, but, like, I just, I remember being, it was the first Maryland basketball game I ever went to, and there was nobody there, and there was this crazy lunatic on the sideline who I guess was the coach. He showed up in a suit and tie, like the other team's coach did, but within two minutes, that coat was like on the ground. Uh, the tie had come undone. The sleeves had come undone. He had rolled up his sleeves, and this man was a lunatic. And that turned out to be Gary Williams, and without question, the greatest hire for the University of Maryland. And what he did from that point on... Um, that's what he's getting remembered for tonight. I mean, he, this guy went on a run that um, you really can't compare to. I mean, 11 straight NCAA tournament appearances from 1993 to 2004. Um, 29 wins in the NCAA tournament, one national championship, two final fours. Um, he beat seven number one teams. Nobody's done that. Nobody took the role of the underdog, the us-against-the-world mentality, the we got to fight our way out of the corner like Gary Williams did. I saw it firsthand. I mean, I got to... I'm lucky enough to say that I went to Maryland when they were going to the Final Fours and they were winning those national titles. I, I remember... Even though he had a great team, he was great at spinning it. Duke would come to town, and they'd be ranked one or two, and we'd be ranked fifth or sixth, and he still would play the no respect card. And, I mean, he got, I mean, I've, I've been to some really cool, I've been to some really cool sporting events, but those Maryland-Duke games in the late 90s, early 2000s, I, I mean, whew, those were some of the loudest, most intense sporting events I've ever been to and probably ever will be attending. I mean, they were, they were awesome. Some of them were great victories. Um, the year Steve Blake stole the ball right before halftime from, from Jason Williams and dunked it, I mean, I, I think the whole, I thought the roof was going to come off the place that night. I also remember when Jason Williams scored 10 points in the last 50 seconds and beat us in cold. I mean, there were, some, there were some battles, but Gary was always the one weathering the storm, always the one 
not quitting. I mean, it, it, if you were up on Maryland by 12 with four minutes to go and you took your foot off the gas, I'd bet that Maryland would win that game. Because Gary never let his foot off the gas. And um, I think I'm calling this little bit the last of Mohicans because there's not many of him left. There's not many guys left that do it the way they learned it, do it the right way, and um, he should be commended for that. And separate what you want, set aside that scandal up at Penn State, but it's the same reason Joe Paterno should be remembered for that. And it's unfortunate that that happened at Penn State, and that, that that's always going to follow Joe Paterno, no matter what your opinion is on him. And I'm not here to say, you know, he's a good person or a bad person. I'm here to say that he was a great coach, and he did it the right way when he was coaching. And um, the number of coaches that can say that are diminishing quickly. And, um, you know, you got these scumbags like Calipari who jump around from school to school and leave disaster in their wake after they've been cheating the whole time. And then you got these guys like Joe Paterno who passed away and Gary Williams who retired. They didn't take handouts. They didn't they didn't play the agent game. They didn't play the recruit game. They they did it the way they thought they knew they should do it. And they they did it the way they wanted to portray to their their players that the way you should do it. And the fact that Gary Williams won a national championship without one McDonald's All-American on the roster is staggering. I remember he drafted, uh, he recruited one Dixon out of Baltimore, and people like, people made fun of him. I mean, it was like, who? You're drafting this little kid? I mean, I don't know if you remember Juan Dixon when he he was recruited, but I mean, he I mean he didn't get that much bigger. But man, that guy was a string bean, and um. Guys like Lonnie Baxter, Byron Mouton, Steve Blake. I mean, guys you didn't hear of. I mean, but they, they, he got those guys to play better than they could possibly imagine as a team and as individuals. I mean, completely staggering to me um, what Gary did. And, it, and it's, it, it's, he's going to deserve everything he gets tonight. And it's going to be pretty emotional, and that place is going to be fired up. Duke in town. You get fired up for Duke anyway. But, I mean, this, this, it's, going to be, it's going to be loud at Comcast tonight, and it's, and it's going to be fun. And I hope that the current Terps team, um, you know, at least put up a fight tonight. I, you know, I'm not... What I I'd love for them to win, but do I expect them to win? No, they're probably they're like eleven point dogs tonight, and Alex Len is hurt, and I just don't I don't see it in the cards. But you you got to give the guy his due, and and there's not many like him left. I mean, look around the college landscape, look around the pro landscape. These coaches bounce around every couple of years. They chase the money, they chase the fame, they chase the, you know. I, say what you want, whatever you want to say they chase, but there's not many guys like Gary Williams left, and he needs to be commended for that, and um, yeah, just it's just a thank you to Gary Williams for uh, everything he did for the school, and everything he did for the athletic program, and uh, he had his critics, but uh, he did it his way, he didn't care what you thought about him, he, you know... He did it anyway, and when he kicked your ass on the court, he that's what, that's what he would do. I mean, there's a quote in the post today. I don't know what it says exactly, but he ta- they were talking about how he didn't have any McDonald's All-Americans on his national title team, and he said, well, there's only 12 guys on my team, and there's only 70. There's only, you know, you can only put 12 guys on a team, and there's only, I think, 70 All-Americans, and he's like, well, you, you give me the rest of those guys who didn't make the McDonald's All-American team, I'll pick 12 of them, and I'll beat you with those 12, because he's a basketball coach, he's not a recruiter.
You want recruiting classes, you can go to Kyle Perry. You want recruiting classes, you can go to Urban Meyer. You want a basketball coach? Gary Williams is your basketball coach. And uh, I'm hopefully I'm speaking for everybody who's around my age, definitely older, definitely a little younger. He's the only coach that I, I know at Maryland. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was sad to see him retire last year, but I keep having – I don't like to keep going back on this, but it, I keep looking back at Penn State, and I'm like, man, if, if that guy would have just stepped down, like, God, I mean, he was there for 61 years. Things would have been a lot different for him. But I, I think Gary walked away when he thought it was right for him, and he walked away on his own terms, and, and I'm happy for him. And uh, he's going to get everything he deserves tonight. So um, this one's for Gary Williams. I appreciate you. And uh, just a real quick thing about the show. The, the Tuesday show where I go over the, uh, the championship game and the one where I preview the championship game, we were having some problems with the audio. Um, so I apologize for that trying to get this shit together but it, it's been a little bit more difficult than I thought but we will be up and running shortly um, but I, I did want to get that out to you guys that uh, it should be a good night um, if you're not fortunate enough to be there it is on ESPN and uh, check it out and uh, if this is the first time you're hearing of the DC Sports Show just hit the subscribe button and uh, you'll get it regularly and uh, this was a little bit more of a serious thing, and I just kind of wanted to get some things off my chest, but uh, I, I think it was important. So uh, that's about it, and uh, enjoy the game. Thanks, Gary.